Coming up on today's Airborne, Garmin's got a new pilot watch called the D2, but Dynon's got a portable pocket EFIS, also called the D2. And on an even more puzzling note, a lot of the FAA online exams have been shuttered by the shutdown. This is Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Jim Campbell. Both I and ANN editor Tom Patton are standing in for Ashley Hale, who's been away on her honeymoon for a little bit over a week and should be back in just a few days. We hope. Till then, we'll be updating on the major stories of the week as they occur and breaking news as it passes our desk. Now, let's get to it. It was only a matter of time, folks, as Garmin makes ready to intro a pilot watch, the D2. Garmin's aviation-oriented GPS watch features include a direct to and nearest function, as well as a built-in adjustable altimeter, altitude alerting capabilities, the option to display both local and Zulu UTC times, and the ability to integrate with various other Garmin products like Pilot, Verb, and others. D2 will offer a worldwide aviation database. Pilots can easily press and hold dedicated buttons for quick access to perform direct to and nearest functions, as well as load flight plans, create waypoints, similar to the capabilities we find in other popular portable avionics. Even further, the option exists to assign customized data fields to display GPS ground speed, GPS track, distance, estimated time and route, bearing, glide ratio, and much more, all conveniently accessible within the device. Similar to other Garmin avionics, D2 has an altitude alert feature which notifies pilots of altitude deviations. Availability for the D2 is anticipated sometime this November. And yet more D2 news, but of a different flavor. Dynon has introduced a second model to the pocket panel product line, the true attitude indicators that can be used by all pilots. Dynon's new D2 adds Wi-Fi connectivity to allow flight data to be sent to popular iPad, smartphone, and tablet aviation applications, and as a second screen with a G-meter. The D2 retails for $1,425, while the original D1 has a lower price, a new one, of $1,195. Both products are true artificial horizons with accurate pitch and roll, can find the horizon even if turned on in flight. The AHAR sensors also drive a turn rate indicator and a slip skid ball. Included is an internal GPS receiver to display GPS ground speed, altitude, vertical speed, and ground track. At only three and a half inches wide, three and a quarter inches high, and an inch thick, the D1 and D2 are really portable. They feature batteries that will last over four hours on a charge and come with two portable mounting options. If you're planning to take an FAA knowledge examination, you'll have to wait until after the government shutdown mess has been resolved. The FAA has closed the doors at AFS 630, the Airman Testing Standards branch of its operation. This means the computer testing centers known as CATS and PSI will not be offering FAA computerized knowledge testing until the government returns to normal operation. If you have a scheduled test, you'll not be able to take it right now. Check on the website for CATS and PSI for updates on when testing will be resumed. Now that you iPhone lovers have finished standing in line trying to get the latest iPhone 5S's or 5C's, here's something you can get for free. Flightplan.com, that's F-L-T-P-L-A-N.com, has rolled out a new free Flightplan Go iPad app. Flightplan Go is the latest addition to the variety of powerful tools available for pre-flight, in-flight, and post-flight. The new Flight Plan Go app is also the platform on which the company says many great new features will be added. The existing FlightPlan.com legacy app was originally created some four years ago. The company said in a news release that, quote, in order to continue to add more capabilities, we felt it was better to start over with an improved platform, so we developed Flight Plan Go. Our friends at Enstrom Helicopter are expanding in more ways than one. The company says it's doubling its space and increasing the staff all in order to benefit their customers. Enstrom claims the expansion will promote a more efficient production process and improve organization and workflow. These improvements will lead to lower costs, shorter lead times, and improved delivery schedules. They are doubling their engineering department and expanding research and development to bring in new ideas. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing.
Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird flight simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The pilot of a crop duster which went down in a cotton field in Robinson, Texas, south of Waco, was largely uninjured and was flying again the next day, although in a different airplane. The airplane didn't fare so well. It landed upside down in a cotton field it was working when it went down, and officials say that's where it will stay until the government goes back to work. The shutdown has halted investigations such as this by the FAA and NTSB, Television station KTWX reports that the pilot said a wind gust forced one of the wings of his airplane to touch the ground and it flipped, coming to rest upside down in the field. Department of Public Safety trooper D.L. Wilson told the station Wednesday that the plane will not be moved until the FAA can investigate. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Today's Aero Video of the Week feels the need, the need for speed. And what better video right now than Race 39 and pilot Jeff Lavelle in his very, very fast Class Air 3 at this year's Reno Air Races. His average speed for that day alone was 398 miles per hour, though he qualified at over 403. The 1 minute 23 second video can be found on YouTube by searching Reno National Air Races Heat 3A Last Lap 2013. And as a former Glass Air 3 owner that rarely saw more than 300, 350 in a dive, man, I'm so jealous. While their best summit years used to be conducted under the old administration and called AOPA Expo, the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association Final Summit convenes this week in Fort Worth, Texas. Despite the fact that these events have for several years now been long on hype and short on news, ANN will be there, mostly to see if we can get a better feel for how the organization will fare under new leadership. ANN has received several reports, though, that AOPA is not given up on some kind of national get-together, with several sources reporting that AOPA is planning to revamp and reinstitute their HQ-based annual fly-in back in Frederick, Maryland, which got the axe under the Fuller presidency. One thing, though, that may not change is the number of commercial pitches that AOPA members complained about so much these past few years, though this time they may not be coming from AOPA, but from AOPA's former boss. ANN has received multiple copies of a commercial pitch email from Fuller by the Fuller Company in which Craig is offering a web store, products, and of course, his services, at least for those of you that can afford them. Hmm, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Okay, here's a surprise. Some 85% of frequent flyers think the TSA is, well, not doing so good, calling it either a poor or fair job in performing security screenings at the nation's airport according to a new survey of frequent flyers conducted by Frequent Business Traveler magazine. The report broke the evaluation down into several areas, but the bottom line is that an overwhelming majority of travelers reported TSA's screening procedures are either not effective or not too effective at preventing acts of terrorism on an aircraft. However, nearly twice as many travelers reported taking part in the TSA's pre-check trusted traveler program, and this resulted in a higher percentage of survey respondents taking a more favorable stance towards TSA service during the screening process. We're going to try that out for ourselves, folks, and let you know here in a couple of weeks. Well, as a former Air Force vet, I am somewhat displeased to report that the Navy beat the Air Force by a score of 28 to 10 in last Saturday's football game. But it wasn't due to a lack of Air Force support on the part of United Airlines. When word got out that the government shutdown might prevent the Air Force from traveling to Baltimore for the game, United offered to provide transportation at no cost. However, Delta Airlines is the official charter airline for Air Force football, and a chartered Delta Boeing 757 transported the Air Force team to the site of their defeat. Okay, Navy, you've got a good football team, but let's see you land a C-17 on one of those boats. 
Alrighty, folks, as noted, Airborne's been on a different schedule for the last few days. We'll be hosting a series of updates as required by breaking another important news while Ashley is away until next week. And yes, she's coming back next week, folks, and you can get rid of me in no time flat. However, you can always get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at www.aero-news.net. Please remember that Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. When we return to a normal schedule next week, you can join us every Tuesday and every Friday for a new edition of Airborne. And by the way, come the first of the year, you'll be seeing Airborne Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm Jim Campbell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a few days.